Friday Night Football Fever on WSBT 22 is brought to you by Zolman's Tire and Auto Care. The hits start right now. The Friday Night Lights are on and high school football is back. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the season premiere of Friday Night Football Fever. I'm Pete Byrne. And I'm Bennett Wise. An off-season of training and three weeks of practice gets put to the test tonight. All teams all across northern Indiana hit the field for the very first time. Yes, they do. And tonight we start with an Elkhart County clash as Jimtown opens year four of the Corey Stoner era up with a tough test at Andrews Field against Northwood. That they do. The Jimmies hoping to play spoiler against a Black Crunch team hungry to make up for an early playoff exit a year ago. Opening play of the season, Northwood's Ashton Hahn on defense wreaking havoc in the backfield, forcing the fumble. The Panthers jump on it and man, they will capitalize. Landon Perry breaks a tackle, spinning his way across the line for the first touchdown of the year. Nitro Tuggle will catch the two point conversion. The next drive quarterback Owen Raider airing it up to the Georgia commit, maintaining possession to the ground. It's a touchdown on the field. Northwood goes ahead 16 nothing after one. They cruise to a 42 22 victory over Jimtown. Crosstown rivals Goshen and Fairfield meeting tonight at Fairfield. Pick it up in the second quarter. Game scoreless. Goshen on the move, but Elliot Garcia jumps up and picks off the pass near midfield. Falcons have the ball with good field position, and they would answer. Breck and Moran takes the handoff, bounces to the outside, off a tackle, and rumbles 30 yards before they finally knock him out of bounds. And a couple plays later, they're going to give it to Moran again, who goes the final five yards for the game's first score. Fairfield goes up eight to nothing, and they win it 29 to six. Now, when Mishawaka moved to the Northern Lakes Conference a few years ago, it created a schedule shift that guaranteed us a great rivalry game in week one. That is sure did. Mishawaka playing Crosstown rival Marion to start its season. It's usually a matchup of two of the top teams in our area as well. Certainly is. Last year, Mishawaka won yeah. the sectional title. Marion actually had a rare down year, but the Knights feel good about turning it around this year. And can you imagine what a statement it would be if they could win it tonight at Steel Stadium? That is where the cavemen are debuting new uniforms tonight. Gray jerseys, gray pants. They look clean, you know, clean like nothing on them. No yes. dirt, no okay. smudges, no nothing. That's Ethan Bryce. That is the opening kickoff of the game. And I dare you to find me a better start to a season <laughs> than that right there. 82 yards to the house to start the year. That's a finalist for the highlight of the night. Bryce puts Mishawaka up six to nothing. Now, after all that excitement, Marion settles down and marches the other way. Brian Osmond doing most of the damage on the opening drive, including the final five yards for the touchdown. Caveman six, night six. But Mishawaka's offense would take control of the game after that. Senior quarterback Brady Fisher leading the way as he takes off for a huge gain of 25 yards. And a few late plays later, Fisher's going to finish off the drive with a touchdown. Mishawaka takes a 13-7 lead and doesn't look back. They win the opener 44-12. Let's go to a loud rice field. Elkhart student section, be loud or go sit with your mom. That's what the sign yes, said as they host Crosstown rival Concord. Third quarter, Minutemen lead 13-0 and adding Rafael Sabas from 37 yards between the pipes to go up 16. Fourth quarter, same score. We're going special teams heavy. Elkhart's Eduardo Aguare puts up the ball, blocks the kick. Tony Dukes taking it the other way to put the Lions in business. The next play. Quinn Ross pass caught by Zach Anderson. He didn't skip leg day. Keeps possession with his thighs to set up Elkhart just outside the red zone where the Lions on the misdirection get some space for Nate Munson who takes it in for six. But Concord stays strong. They hang on for the 16 to six win. A good one. That it was. Northridge opening up on the road tonight at Fort Wayne North. That's Notre Dame recruit Tay Tay Johnson. He's sitting this one out as he recovers from a broken foot over the summer. Pick it up in the second quarter, Northridge trailing fourth and two at the 40. They're going for it, and they go big. Braden Clark to McLean Miller. He's got it for the touchdown. Raiders up nine to seven. Then right before half, they would tack on three more. Dylan Ritchie knocks down the chip shot to put the Raiders up five at the break. Northridge goes on the road and gets a nice opening week win, 26 to 13. Head out west to Michigan City in there. Home opener against Warsaw. We'll pick it up in the first quarter. Tyler Bush, a quarterback, passing to Elijah Collins across the middle. Stop and stare. That's seven points with the APAT. Still first quarter. Michigan City, man, they were cruising. Dylan Sullivan with the handoff, but it's stuffed in the backfield by George Branch. And then Michigan City still bringing the defense. They recover a fumble. It's Caden Pierce who scoops it up, but the Tigers able to pull off a comeback with a 71-yard touchdown in oh, the wow. fourth quarter. 17-13, 
Good Tigers. Win. Good win for Bartball. All right, we got to take a quick time out, but we got lots more ahead tonight on Friday Night Football Fever as several other teams make their opening night debuts. After going all the way to state last year, will there be an encore for the Cougars? Highlights from New Prairie and several others when Friday Night Football Fever returns. You're watching Friday Night Football Fever on WSBT 22. Sponsored by Zolman, Steiner, and Auto Care. Welcome back to Friday Night Football Fever. New Prairie was the last Michiana team left standing a year ago. Bennett, the Cougars made it all the way to the state yep. finals at Lucas Oil Stadium. They did. That game, however, didn't go the way no. that they necessarily had hoped. But the Cougars return a lot of talent in 2023, motivated to make sure they get that last That's step. That's right. Tonight, New Prairie opens up on the road with their traditional week one opponent. That would be the Laporte Slicers. And boy, Kiwanis Field is packed and where oh, they wow. treated to one whale of a game tonight. We're going to pick up the action in the second quarter. The home team trailing 8-3, to three, but Aiden Pennzoil hits Drew Flores over the middle for six. Slicers go up 10-8. to eight. They led most of the way as we go to the fourth quarter. New Prairie's down 17-15, 50 seconds to go. Owen Chalik's kick is good. New Prairie takes an 18-17 lead, 50 ticks left on the clock. What can you do in 50 seconds, Bennett? A lot. Apparently a whole lot. Laporte marches 50 yards, and Jack Doty boots a field goal through the uprights as time expires. Look at that pandemonium. Laporte shocks New Prairie tonight, 20-18. I can definitely know that one's that one's for Jake. As we go now to Bremen as they host LaVille. Jeff Kaiser in his first year coaching the Lancers. That's Lucas Plummer. He's a quarterback too. He can kick a ball. 39 yards through the pipes and LaVille leads 17 to three at the end of the third quarter. They get plenty of help from this guy right here. Cody Allen, an absolute beast. Big gains in the second half as LaVille hangs on to win 17 to 10. And Penn traveling to the reigning 5A champs from Valpo. The Kingsmen trailing 14-12 entering the second half. Let's see if Penn's Nolan McCullough wants back down. No, no. I don't Never. think so. Oh, man. A run of over 30 yards puts the Kingsmen Quarterback, at, fullback, it's all good. Exactly. You can do it all. So can this guy, Jake Bayless, cutting up the gut for six. He'd score three touchdowns tonight. It's 18-14 Penn in the third quarter, and why not give it back to McCullough as they're up four in the fourth? He will not be denied. Yeah, look back at it as Penn picks up a great road win over the reigning 5A champs from Valpo, 38-21 Kingsman. All right, now tonight marks the beginning of a special season on the north side of South Bend because it will be the final season of football played at Clay High School. Yeah, the school is set to close in the spring of 2024. And that has really hit the Colonials pretty hard this year. It has, but it's also given the team an added dose of motivation to go out and make the most of this season. Clay did not get a win last year, but would tonight be different? Opening up at home against Hammond Knoll, and they've got a 6-0 lead, but here come the visitors. Eli Jaboon takes the handoff and goes 30 yards, gets in. That ties the game at 6. Hey, say hi. To, no, say hi. The cameraman doesn't bite. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> All right, next drive. Jaden Rivers is going to keep it himself. And now the visitors are in front 12 to 6. We've seen this movie before, right? Not so fast. Clay not backing down. Liam oh, Wolf yeah. looks deep. Hits Tyrese Jones for a 68-yard score. That's a finalist for the highlight of the night. Clay ties it back up. But Hammond Noel would win a back-and-forth affair tonight, 30 to 18. Staying in South Bend, St. Joe hosting Lakeland this evening. It's a new era at St. Joe. No longer the Indians. They got a new look, black pants, black shirts, black helmets. I like it. St. Joe trailing tonight in the second quarter, struggling to move the ball as Alex Ortiz gets sacked by Carson Mickham. St. Joe trailing and forced to punt late in the half. But that's when their defense is going to make a play. Lakeland driving. St. Joe forces the fumble, and you can see by the players' reactions, they think they have it, and they do. Diamond Curry comes out of the pile with the football, and St. Joe has a chance right before halftime. Under a minute to go, fourth and long. Alex Ortiz airs it out. Dallas Downey hauls oh, it in for ball. 33 yards in the St. Joe six. St. Joe takes the lead, 14-13, heading into the halftime. But Lakeland a touchdown better in the second half as the Lakers rally for a 33-28 win. Not too far away at School Field, South Bend Adams hosting Culver Academy. The visiting Eagles getting on the board first. Michael McColgan pitching along the right side. Jay Rodriguez. Rumbling and stumbling for six. That counts. CMA in front. Now, camp coach Frank Karszewski tries to get Adams going. Phoenix Clark complete, completing the pass to Quinn Tutu. Ooh, he takes a hit. Hangs on, though. Adams on the march into enemy territory, but CMA makes a big stop. Forces the fumble. Trey Schumacher picking it up. No butterfingers. 55 yards the other way to the residence. That 
is the finalist for the highlight of the night as Culver Academy wins it 21 ball game 14. all right other scores tonight South Bend Riley opens on the road with a big win over Gary West South Bend Washington was trailing ham in central in the fourth quarter and Glenn beats Boone Grove 43 to 26. Streak is over at Plymouth. They pick up a win 27 to 8. Tippy Valley also gets a win over Wawa C 23-12. North Judson dominating Culver 47 to nothing. And finally, Triton, a nice win at home 30 to 6 over South Central, and Knox shuts out Winnemac on opening night. All right, we got to take one more final timeout, but when we come back, we will show Best you the winner of the, night. of the highlight of the night. The first one for 2023 when Friday Night Fever wraps up right after this.